Welcome to Real Turkey Channel. I'm Attila Yeshilada, as usual, broadcasting from my room. Because, you know, there is something called coronavirus around. There are no cases in Turkey, but who knows, you know. <coughs> and already the coughing has started, but still I don't have coronavirus. Today's video is titled Turkey Enemy at the Gates. I want to talk about coronavirus or as the World Health Organization named the little baby COVID-19 and how its arrival in Turkey, if it does, and I hope it doesn't, might affect the economy and confidence and obviously the markets. Now, this needs some introduction about how coronavirus is doing in the Middle East. So far, there are very few cases in Egypt, Bahrain, I, I believe today, or Kuwait, uh, Lebanon, and Israel. It seems well contained there. Iraq reported its first case on Monday. There, too, the situation is too early to assess. However, the problem is Iran. Iran, obviously, is not a country where the press is even half free, semi-free, not free at all, completely censored. But uh, according to the Turkish uh, press, a deputy that's a parliamentary member from the Qum city, which has been the epicenter of the uh, epidemic in Iran, has complained during parliamentary debates that there are at least 50 deaths in the city, whereas the official number is only 12. He further claimed that there may be made more than 500 uh, cases, whereas the official number is still 40, I believe. Iraq, another Irani Iranian city, has become the second nest for COVID-19. We have received the first news of a death related to the disease. Uh, I am obviously not a medical expert or epidemiologist, but from what I read and from my years of studying Iran, I am afraid Iran is lost to COVID-19. And allow me to explain the reasons because this, this constitutes the gist of my argument that the enemy is truly at Turkey's gates and we need to be extremely cautious and immediately declare a national alarm or alert, uh, DEFCON 1 or 5, to deal with this menace. Uh, first of all, Iran obviously has been impoverished by the United States embargoes. It can't even afford some basic medicines, as you know, in these countries, health, even though it's the most important public service that ought to be provided, is the first that receives the axe in the budget. That has been the case in Iran. That will be the case in Turkey and other countries. Two, Qum is the religious center of the Iranian branch of the Shia Muslim. And the funeral for the uh, militia general Soleimani has been held there a couple of weeks ago which was attended by hundreds of thousands of Iranians. Experts I have watched on TV suspect, wait a second, let me just light this up a little bit because you don't see my face. Not that you, you need to see my face, but uh, okay, here we go, here we go, that, that's better. Um, during Soleimani's funeral, hundreds of thousands of people were there. And at that time, the virus might be, pre might be present during its incubation period in several people, and it might have easily spread to the rest of the Iranian cities. As well, it, it's sort of like a Hajj or, or, or Mecca, so religious Iranians visit the city year round. Now it has been quarantined, but you know I think the chickens are out of the coup. And to me, uh, the, the fact that the virus has maybe an incubation period as long as 27 days that it might live on non-alive objects such as money or surfaces for long times and it might also it might also be transmitted via air suggests that uh, Iran is extremely susceptible to the uh, spread of the epidemic now that 
brings us to Turkey. Obviously, Iran is our neighbor. We have a lot of trade. The magnitude of trade has declined to $6 billion, and a lot of it is natural gas sales by Iran to Turkey. But that doesn't explain the thousands of small merchants on both sides that ferry goods from one side to the other side. As well, Iranian tourists spend their holidays in the cities of Van, Erzincan, Elazig, or if they are rich in Istanbul because they can enjoy alcohol without, uh, you know, a crackdown, uh, or they don't have to wear the religious veil or whatever their purposes are. So there has been very good uh, Iranian tourist traffic. In fact, this year, the Ministry of Tourism expected 6 million Iranian tourists. And so far, I think in the first seven, eight weeks of the year, roughly 600 Iranian tourists had visited our country. So the virus might have already arrived in Turkey, though, as I've said, there are no confirmed cases. Turkey yesterday finally recognized the danger that that the Iranian infection poses to Turkey's health care system and uh, close the borders, but only for tourist traffic, exports and imports continue in a controlled manner, which means, you know, uh, there is still traffic between an Iran and Turkey. There's another aspect which uh, the authorities completely miss which is that there's a lot of human and goods trafficking between Iran and Turkey. A lot of poor Afghanis migrate through Iran to Turkey. We smuggle goods, they smuggle uh, crude oil, etc., etc. And the borders are extremely mountainous and, and difficult to patrol or, or, or to provide surveillance. So it is plausible, though I hope it will not happen, that the epidemic will eventually arrive in Turkey. Now, assuming it does, it poses a huge risk to the Turkish economy and Turkish sentiment. The people of Turkey, like I believe also the Greeks and Middle Easterners, are extremely friendly. Their most common method of greeting anyone, whether it be a relative or a stranger just introduced is to hug and kiss on both cheeks. I mean, that's COVID must say, wow, this is heaven, man. I mean, I don't have to spend much of an effort to spread here. Uh, we, you know, our hygiene levels are lower than West or our understanding of hygiene is different than West. We congregate uh, in large sports exhibitions, cinemas, theaters, etc., etc. And if someone sneezes or, or, coughs publicly, it's not scorned upon. We simply are not familiar with these diseases. But most importantly, this is the uh, peak of the flu epidemic. And, you know, I'm one of the sufferers. And coronavirus, COVID-19, conceals itself extremely intelligently behind a flu epidemic. And a lot of people don't go to the doctor. They use either homemade recipes or just take an antibiotic or two, or a painkiller. So if it arrives in Turkey, there is fertile ground for rapid spread uh, from east towards the west. Now, Turkey's health system is extremely strained because in addition to population growth of 1.25%, we also have roughly 4 million Syrian visitors, African visitors, as well as roughly a million Afghani and Iraqis, which are treated as citizens when it comes to health and education services. On the other hand, of course, uh, because of the economic slowdown, Turkish economy is expected to have grown in real terms by 1% or less in 2019. Budgetary expenditures cannot be raised. The health budget has received much less of a cut or much more of an increase in inflation terms than other, budget, other budgets, but it's still, still not enough because we have universal health care. That is, with no or very small payment, 
the government has guaranteed free health care to every citizen who doesn't have the means to pay for itself. As a result, you know, certain medicines cannot be found. Universities are overcrowded, underbudgeted. And this system is already dealing with the flu epidemic, seasonal flu epidemic. Now, if it is also burdened by coronavirus, then we're in deep trouble. There are simply not enough resources or trained medical personnel, be it orderlies, um, nurses, male nurses, or doctors to attend to all of these patients. The damage to the economy could be massive. In addition to health expenditures, uh, you would have to quarantine cities, uh, you would have to ban sports exhibitions, uh, possibly cinemas, theaters, et cetera, et cetera, which is uh, rather a good portion of the economy. The worst problem comes from tourism. This is not the, the peak of the tourism season, but it is the peak of the reservation season. And if Turkey catches the corona bug, then obviously no one will make reservations for summer. Last year, tourism generated $25 billion net, which is roughly 4% of our GDP. And we were expecting another windfall year this year. Not only are we suffering from the fact that tourism is declining across the globe, but if the coronavirus shows up in Turkey, it is going to be disastrous. Obviously, we are, even though we do have a trade deficit, we are a major exporting country to EU, Middle East and North Africa, uh, part of their supply chains, in particular in Europe, in Middle East and North Africa, we mostly sell finished goods, food, uh, textiles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And if Turkish uh, industry suffers, if there are factory closures, etc., then not only will our exports go down, but also the European growth will slow down. And finally, of course, the impact on sentiment. We have seen that that blow to sentiment in American PMI numbers, IHS, which uh, uh, col collects the data with JP Morgan, reports that tourism, uh, travel, and leisure have suffered quite a bit, largely because people are afraid to travel at times of coronavirus. If something like that happens in Turkey, then both domestic and international travel will suffer as well. This is what I call enemy at the gates. You have to remember that in addition to that, we're dealing with the Assad's army in Idlib, the Syrian province, with so-called General Haftar in Libya. So military expenditures are going up. And our central bank has cut the interest rates too deep. So uh, Turkish rates on bonds and deposits are negative in ex ante terms. So foreign financial investors are abandoning Turkey. We are under siege in many ways. And we I, I personally hope that I, I at this point don't have much of a hope that health authorities will be able to deal with this infection. But maybe the, the virus will die itself because of the northern spring, northern hemisphere spring, or Perhaps it will mutate into a less lethal form, as, as several viruses have done. Or maybe we'll get lucky and it will just skip Turkey and go somewhere else. But otherwise, Turkey's economy will take a massive hit. To recall, our expectation for real GDP growth is only 2 to 2.5% for 2020. And the corona hit could have that easily. As I speak to you, this is Monday afternoon in Turkey, dollar to TL is trading at 6.15. That's 6 liras and 15 kuruşes fetch fund one dollar. If dollar continues to rise against the Turkish lira, both if it will affect inflation, inflation will go up. As well, Turkish corporates, which carry huge amounts of foreign debt on their balance sheets, will take a further blow because their ability to service and pay off those debts will be uh, hampered. 
Again, I don't, this is not a scare scenario. I am extremely worried about Iran and the fact that the virus has showed up in Iraq as well makes me suspect scientifically that Turkey will not be spared unless we are extremely cautious and meticulously guard our borders, which we are not doing at this point. This has been Attila Yeshilada, also called the angel of death, saying goodbye from Istanbul.